right, Sokotoa and inverse trig. So with Sokotoa, what we've been doing before is, you know, the sine of theta equals, and then you pick the hypotenuse and the adjacent side or the opposite side, depending on your trig function. So if you did sine, you'd have the sine of theta equals L over H. Well, what happens if you know some of your what happens if you know your angle? Okay, so let me draw a triangle out here. All right, so the first thing you do is if you know your angle, say theta in this case is 25 degrees, all right? And you know that the hypotenuse is 20. And you wanna find this side of your triangle. Okay, what would you do? How would you solve for x? All right, how would you solve for x? Well, first you need to identify what sides you have. Well, here's our angle, so that means this is the opposite side, and of course this is across from the um, the right angle, so this is our hypotenuse. Okay. So, which function uses opposite hypotenuse? Well, if you go over here to Sokotoa, it is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, you would take the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, now you can fill in what you know. You have the sine of your angle, which our angle in this case is 25 degrees. We know that equals opposite over hypotenuse which is 20, okay? Now, now, what is our next step? We have a fraction over there. We have x in the numerator of our fraction. So what is our next step in solving? Well, we need to bring x down and get it out of a fraction. So the next step, you would want to multiply both sides by the 20, okay? So 20 times the sine of 25 equals x. And yes, I would multiply this beforehand. I wouldn't take the sine of 25 and then do it because then you'd round your answer too early. So, and this way you can just type all this in at one time and be done with it. Okay. Now the important thing to remember is this sine of 25, treat it as one variable. Treat it as one thing. Like don't try to be dividing the 25 by both sides. Okay. Treat this as one thing, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Treat it as one thing. Do not try to divide out the angle, all right? So now, to solve this, since our angle is in degrees, you need to make sure your calculator is in degree mode, okay? Make sure your calculator mode always matches um, your angle. Since our angle is in degrees, our calculator needs to be in degrees. So you do 20 times the sine of 25. The sine of 25 is approximately 4.23. Multiply those together. X equals 8.4. Whoops, I just cut off my 4. Okay, X is 8.4. All right, now, so let's just review what you want to do is when you have an angle and you have your two sides, you need to identify the information you have and then see which trick function is most appropriate to use. Okay? And then you just simply solve for your variable. But the important thing, remembering, make sure you treat this as, you can treat this as a variable or just treat this as one thing. Okay? Don't, don't try to be dividing both sides by 25 to get rid of this. Okay? Leave this as sine of 25, all right? That's not what I wanted. Let me skip that. I'm going to come back to that. All right, so here's an example. I'm going to make this a U try. I want you to try this one. We have a triangle. All right, here's our triangle. What I want you to do this is 19 degrees, this is 12, and x. 
I want you to solve for x. All right, solve for x. So pause the video. This is a U-try. Pause the video. Take a few minutes or however long you need and solve for x. All right, so first thing you need to do is identify what side you have. Well, this side is across from the 90, so this is your hypo. I can't spell, apparently. And this side is next to your angle. It's physically touching your vertex. So this is the adjacent side. So we have adjacent and hypotenuse. So we're going to need cosine. So we know that the cosine of our angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So we know that the cosine of 19 degrees equals 12 over x. All right. Now, if you remember before, x was in the numerator. Now x is in the denominator. Okay. Now, there's a shortcut for this. When you end up with x in your denominator, the shortcut is to simply take whatever is on this side of the equal sign and change it with the x. So x equals 12 divided by the cosine of 19 degrees. Okay, That's the shortcut method. When you have x in the bottom, just take this side of the equal sign, put it underneath, take the x, and put it over here. Okay, because what you'd have to do, the long way is you'd multiply both sides by x to get rid of the x. So it would be x times the cosine of 19 equals 12. You divide both sides by the cosine of 19 to get x by itself. So you'd have x equals 12 over the cosine of 19. Okay. So now this is simply 12 over 0.946, which equals 12.7. Okay. So x equals 12.7, all right? So that's pretty easy. You can use tangent as well. Like if I wanted you to find y and you didn't know what x was, you would use tangent of 19 and solve for y that way. Okay, so the tangent of 19 degrees would equal, see this is your opposite side. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it would be y over 12. So y would equal 12 times the tangent of 19 degrees. All right? And then you could solve that out and get y. Okay? So that is, so that is how you find your side length. If you're given an angle in one side, you can find your other side length using trig. Now, what happens if you have your side lengths, like we did with the work today, we had our side lengths, but we did not have an angle to work off of. Okay, how would you find the angle? So, inverse trig is how you find the angle. So when you know the angle, you use the regular trig buttons, which was the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. But if you don't know the angle, you have to use inverse trig. Inverse trig is the sine to the negative 1, cosine to the negative 1, and tangent to the negative 1. All right? Usually these are accessed by hitting second and then the normal trig button, and it will give you the inverse trig. You use inverse trig when you need to find the angle. Okay, you don't have the angle, you're trying to find it. Let's look at an example. All right, so here we have a right triangle, and here we have our angle, alpha. All right, now, we know, say there's a person standing here. Wow, oh, really skinny person. All right. Say they're six feet tall. Okay. Say their shadow is eight feet long. All right. What is the angle that their head makes with the ground? 
All right. How are we going to do this? Well, first we need to identify what sides we have. Well, here's our ankle angle. So we have the opposite side and the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, that is tangent. So the tangent of alpha equals opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of alpha equals 6 over 8. You don't have to reduce it if you don't want to. You can, but you don't have to. So now what you're going to do, since we don't know alpha, okay, since we don't know alpha, you're going to do the inverse tangent, so you're going to use the tangent to the negative 1. When your parenthesis opens, you're going to type in the 6 over 8. Okay, you're going to type in the 6 over 8. And when you hit enter, it'll give you your angle. So in this case, it'll be 36.9 degrees. The tangent, the inverse tangent of 6 over 8 is 36.9 degrees. Now, here is where you have to make sure you know what mode your calculator is in. Because if you're in degree mode, your answer will be your angle in degrees. If you're in radian mode, your answer will be your angle in radians. Okay? So make sure you know what mode your angle's in and you're giving your what mode your calculator's in and you're giving your answer in the correct system, either degrees or radians. Okay? Very important. Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure you know what mode your calculator is in. Okay? So here's a you try. All right? Say you're fishing. There's some water. Your boat. It's a sailboat. Little tiny sail. Here you are fishing. You get your pole, your fishing pole, and then you have your string going down, and and you've hooked a fish. Okay, you hooked the fish. Okay, say you're looking at that fish, and he is, and you can tell that he's 18 feet from the water line okay and he's 12 feet from where your line enters the water okay what is the angle what is the angle of depression okay because remember angle of depressions go down what is your angle of depression of the fish compared to where your line enters the water okay I want you to solve for alpha. All right, so find me my angle. All right, so we have to look at this. Okay, here's our 90. So we know this is our hypotenuse, and this is our adjacent angle. So what uses adjacent and hypotenuse? That's cosine. The cosine of alpha equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. So the cosine of alpha equals 12 over 18. And again, like I said, you don't have to reduce it. That's the beauty of this. You don't have to reduce it. You can just throw that straight in. All right. So now you're going to take the inverse cosine of 12 over 18. And for your angle, you should have gotten 48.2 degrees okay again make sure your angle is in the right mode for the question being asked if they want the answer in degrees make sure it's in degree mode if they want the answer in radians make sure it's in radian mode if it's not specified I would recommend doing degree mode just because that's probably what you're most familiar with up till this point so if it doesn't say I would recommend degree mode but technically it doesn't matter what mode you're in but if it states you know Write your angle in degrees, make sure you're in degree mode. Okay? 
So this has been your, um, I guess you'd call it part three of Sokotoa video. And your introduction to inverse trig, we're going to do several problems over this tomorrow to get you used to this, and you'll be able to do this without even thinking. All right? So see you tomorrow.